So. All right. So, so, what are we doing? We're going to talk a little bit about the Nintendo Switch because there was a presentation yesterday. I don't know if you missed it. Well, two days ago. And KY and I, we had some initial thoughts. And we, we discussed just stuff that was like kind of right off the bat. How we felt. This is going to be a little bit more in depth because I've had some time to think about it. I've had some time to absorb new information. I let the hype kind of die down a bit. And this is going to be incendiary because there's going to be people that feel a very strong certain way about this. And that's fine. This is my opinion. You have yours. Um, I'm going to be very fair. I have a list of the good, the bad, and the eh of the Nintendo Switch and its presentation. Now, for the record, this is coming from someone who has it pre-ordered uh, as well as Zelda. So this is kind of just um, some, some thoughts and some reflections. So we're going to start with the good. So here's my list. Here's the list of the good things. I'm going to talk about these points and then we'll go to the eh and then the bad, okay? Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the system price. On its own, $300 in adjusted for inflation is a very cheap console compared to a lot of others, right? So the problem is with the system price is that you don't get games with it. You don't get anything with it. You just get the system. But you do get the Joy-Con, you get the grip, and you get the Switch and the base and everything. So you get to play... You get to have the system and fuck around with it for 300 That's pretty good. Some other systems also do not come with games or did not when they came out. And they had some pretty nasty issues with like, well, there's no games for a little while and you just spent $400, $500 on a system. So I would say that that's a good price point. I was, you know, some people were speculating 250 but 300 or, you know, 299 that's 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 pretty good. Um, we're going to talk about the downsides of that a little bit later, but that's 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 a good thing to get the base thing for that price, okay? The launch date is a little sooner. That's not really much of a positive, so I'd like to... I didn't think too much about that. Like I said, underprepared. I'm the guy who goes to the PowerPoint presentation with bad preparation. But I do think that a March 3rd launch date is better for us because, well, it's, it's sooner. You know, it's real quick. Here's the presentation. Well, less than two months, you have your system. There's a downside to that too, which is um, I think that a delayed launch could have been better for the launch games, which is, well, I'll definitely delve into that in a minute, okay? Having Zelda at launch is, is great. Um, the downside, of course, is that there really isn't a lot of other launch stuff. We will talk about that. Zelda at 60 FPS is great. There's also a screenshot that I saw there was a comparison between the Wii U version and the Switch version. And it seems like the textures are also improved on the Zelda Switch. So it seems like the Zelda game on the Switch is gonna look better, not just from a frame rate standpoint, but it's also gonna have better textures. So that's a good thing. You get a Switch with Zelda at launch, that's gonna be uh, good for a lot of people. That's gonna keep people happy. It's gonna keep me happy. Um, however, it's pretty much just Zelda at launch. We'll talk about that. Region free, I didn't expect that, even though I kind of put that on my bingo card. But it's region free, meaning games from different regions will work. That's pretty amazing. That's big for Nintendo, and that is a, a positive. I don't think I need to say why. So, plus one there. Um, the Joy-Con tech, the reason I put that on the list is because I didn't expect it to have as much as it does um it's kind of cool it has like the the gyro stuff it also has the detector you can put it to your mouth like you're eating a sandwich i don't god knows what the fuck you would need that for other than a cheap gimmicky mini game but maybe in the future someone will figure out how to like the ball tech you put your balls in front of it and you dangle it and it's like oh you get the most points for dangling your balls the most times i don't know but there's that um there's definitely some interesting tech in the Joy-Con, you know, being able to, um, we already know that the system's portable. We already know that. So I'm not talking about the portability aspect. I think overall the portability is a good thing and it's, there's some downsides to it too. Having this double-edged sword of like, it does both, but 
I wasn't expecting the Joy-Con to have um, that little like uh, thing that's like a wrist strap and it makes it feel a little bit better. Apparently, people that have used it said it's a very good feeling controller. You know, you, it comes complete with, um, you know, the shoulder buttons. And, it, you know, that's kind of cool. And you have a two-player mode right there. So right out the box, you do get two controllers. Kinda. So, I think that's cool. Uh, I think I spelled Odyssey wrong. So, in which case, ignore that. Yeah. Yeah, there's supposed to be a Y at the end. Well, that's my... <laughs> yeah. So I spelt that completely wrong. So here's what we're going to do. I knew I spelt it wrong just when I looked at it. So here's what, how we're going to fix this. Yeah, look at that. Oh my god. That's fucking... Let me tell you. That's magic. That is magic. Here, you know what? I can make that more magic. If you just give me a second. I can even... I can fix this better. No. No, that didn't quite fix it, did it? Well, <laughs> I tried. I try to do a shadow here. I'm just now I'm just trying to fix my goddamn mistake. Ah, that's good enough. All right, so Super Mario Odyssey. The more I looked at it, the more I watched trailers and footage and I watched the treehouse some of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. Um I will say that the game looks great. People are like kind of calling it Mario 06 to dismiss it, but I really do think that the game looks fantastic and real people human world looks weird. Because I didn't know that Mario wasn't a person, but I guess he is. He's a cartoon person. Okay. The way I see it, that city level is picture Mario 64. You jump into a picture and you end up in a fucking city. So I kind of look at that city level as just one part. Like the game returns to the Mario 64, Mario Sunshine style where you, you can explore a big world. And there's a lot of different worlds. There's one that looks like the Day of the Dead. There's like vegetable world. There's like weird polygon world. So there's a there's forest world. So I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be cool to go back to that style. And there's a big variety of levels and the controls. I mean, that's Mario games are usually really, really well done. Nintendo does a good job with the controls. Uh, visuals look great. Um, it seems like we're, you know, there's the hat and all that weird stuff. Some people don't really like that. I think it's okay. I'm not really crazy about the vaudeville Bowser thing very much, but it's okay. Um, I do like the hat, and I like how you can throw it and then jump on it. That's going to be like, not flood, but it definitely is going to open up some room for different gameplay. And I'm excited to see what kind of moves Mario unlocks. I'm excited for Mario Odyssey. I would put that at number two for my most excited anticipated 2017 games. Very cool. So, and then the eight switch local multiplayer, meaning you can get eight people together in a room with eight switches and play Mario Kart or whatever Splatoon or, you know, just, just have everyone in a room, put your switch on a dock or on the table and just play. That's cool. That's a really, for me, that's a nice way to get people together locally or outside on a nice night playing video games together. So... Some good things. Uh, the presentation itself was good. I liked the characters. When I say the characters, <laughs> I mean the Splatoon guy who did the weird stuff. Um, there was also, you know, the information was doled out appropriately. I didn't feel like it was, uh, <laughs> the poor translator was embarrassing or he was embarrassed or whatever happened. And I felt really bad for him. Obvious mistakes aside, the presentation had some high points and low points. And I also, well, some of the low points of the presentation for me were definitely when they showed a fuckload of the casual stuff. And then, you know, the developers were just talking and it was like, okay, well, you're repeating the same thing a thousand times. Could you show us more games? However, mostly we got to the point 
Um, I think they should have talked more about the portability aspect because that was a big angle for um, that first trailer and made everyone excited. And this time it was like, hey, check out these that you can milk a cow and you can shoot people. That was a little bit weird for me. I didn't really care for that. But overall, the presentation did deal out the information. It showed you the games. You got what you wanted. But there were things you didn't get. So that was that's my list of good things. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> Odyssey. So here's my things that were kind of like, these could be good or bad. Um, they're not bad. They're not good. They're just, uh, we'll see what happens. The first year lineup to me looks pretty okay for the Nintendo first party stuff, but it's not going to be enough to uh, carry the system. What I mean by that, the, the whole first year, you have Zelda followed by a Mario Kart port followed by in the summer splatoon followed in december or holiday by mario so you got four first party games for the first year now in the past that might have been more than we got for like n64 or for even gamecube so to me that's like okay we get some stuff it's cool but you know, I'm still waiting to see what third party stuff. Um, if we only get what they say we're going to get, like what we've been shown, then I feel a little bit more like, OK, what's going on here? Um, the Xenoblade game is supposed to come out this year. That No More Heroes game is supposed to come out this year. But I mean, who knows? I don't I really don't think the Xenoblade 2 thing or whatever it is, is going to meet lo this window because they're traditionally they delay their games. If, even if it does, and let's say Xenoblade makes the launch or the first year window, that's for fans of that series. I think it's still going to be one of those things where people who don't know the series are going to have a, a hard time justifying that purchase. So that's me. Arms, it looks better than I thought it would. Um, the Treehouse was a pretty interesting demonstration of it. Um, I'm not really into motion control stuff anymore, so it's a little gimmicky. However, the game does look like it has a lot of uh, variety and depth that wasn't shown in the trailer. And it seems like it could be fun. The fact that it's like the big new IP that they're pushing, or at least one of the things that they're pushing, I wasn't crazy about it. Again, this is all my opinion. You can feel however you want. You know, I'm just sharing my thoughts. Arms looked okay. And I think it's going to be a surprise good game. But I also don't know if it's enough to carry. Like, uh, you know, the first year, that crucial first year of the system. And uh, I don't think it's making launch, which is a problem. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe looks cool. New battle mode. You have a few new items or old items returning, some new characters. A little disappointed because I thought there were going to be new tracks. Uh, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. It, I don't know if it was confirmed or not. Maybe someone in chat knows if there's going to be like new racing courses. There's going to be new battle mode courses. And the battle mode is going to be revamped entirely. But. Apparently there's an option for traditional controls for arms. So that's good. They showed new tracks. Okay, good. I thought the Splatoon track was um, a battle mode track, but that's good. So, fine. All right, you have here a remake. You have um, some new stuff. You have a battle mode. Um, you can get carry two items at the same time. So I feel like Mario Kart 8 Delex Deluxe is going to be a good thing for people that didn't get a Wii U. I think there's a lot of people that don't have a Wii U that are going to get a Switch. And I feel like the people that do have a Wii U will probably end up buying Mario Kart again because it's portable and because of the new stuff. It should be a launch title. Mario Kart plus Zelda is, I think, a pretty good, like, solid launch because Mario Kart isn't really new. 
and it'll be a way to kind of say, hey, check out these two games. It comes out like a month and a half after. So that's not bad. But in terms of the launch lineup, which we're going to get to, it would have been nice. It would have really, it would have been a, a big boost, you know. So, yeah, kind of in the middle about it. Uh, battery life, the reason it's it's in this category and not in the red is because it's still kind of on par with the 3DS battery life. I know people are like, oh, 2.5 hours, that's not enough. Well, if you're playing Skyrim, it's 2.5. If you're playing like Isaac, it's going to be closer to 4 or 5. That's what we've been told. 4 or 5 is still better than the old 3DS. Uh, I, and you can still plug the thing in. I told you like where I go, the way I do my commutes and the way I, I handle things like with portable stuff, I could just plug it in. So, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. It kind of sucks. I'm not crazy about the battery life. In fact, 2.5 hours for a game like Zelda, I get it, blows. Uh, but it's still not the worst thing. I think people are kind of using that as a talking point, whereas there's bigger issues, <laughs> to be honest. The battery life is kind of just whatever. You know, again, as long as I can plug the goddamn thing in, um, then I'm happy, but yeah, it's, 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 it's small, but for me, and again, this is my list. It doesn't bother me as much as some of the other stuff. Um, it's got a multi input touchscreen, which I just learned about and it's like, okay, that's cool. Nintendo has not had multi input touchscreens before. However, a lot of times you're going to be playing this thing with the touchscreen in a dock. So what's the point? So whatever touchscreen functionality you may have, if you dock it, that's going to be gone. And I'm just not sure how that's going to work. Maybe it's just a bonus for portable mode. Cool, I guess. It's just there. <sighs> Splatoon 2. The reason I put that here, and this is going to be controversial you know I, I liked splatoon i put like 20 hours into it um i thought it was a remake it just i mean i thought it was just a deluxe edition of splatoon 1 and yeah they talked about new levels new guns and i'm sure splatoon fans are going to be really happy uh in a lot of ways i guess i just kind of feel like maybe it's too splatoon for this to be a thing. Number two, it doesn't look different enough. Now, again, it's it's in the middle for me because I'm just not sure. I mean, I'll probably buy it and enjoy it very much. It's got new new levels, new features, new items, game modes, and all that stuff. I'm sure they're going to release a game that has cool stuff in it. But I also, it's believe it or not, it's not the biggest draw for the system for me. Uh, for some people, yes. For me, uh, I'm kind of on the fence about it. Um, it's not a yearly sequel, which is nice. You know, we're not talking Assassin's Creed 3, 3.5, 3.7, and then Assassin's Creed 4, 4.5, 5. I'm just doing an example. I don't know the, the numbers. But um, when it comes to Splatoon, you know, we're, we're still getting like two years in between. So maybe it'll be good. It probably will be. I'm not too excited. I'll get it. I'll stream it. But maybe it just needs to win me over. So it's kind of there in the middle. Uh, and then the hardware itself, I think, is kind of... I'm kind of torn on it because I do like the portability. I like the Joy-Con. I like that, um, you know, it has uh, the local multiplayer, like I said. I like that when you dock it, you know, you play on your TV, you take it out, you play on your couch. What I don't like, and I guess it's necessary, is the performance hit when you undock it. Um, I, apparently, there's some numbers being thrown around. I'm not going to talk about the numbers because I don't know them, and I'll probably get them wrong and look like an idiot anyway. But you know what? I already look like an idiot, so it doesn't matter. The point is, when it comes to the hardware, it's sufficient for what it needs to do, but it's also, and I think it uses Tegra, 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 
So, I mean, it can handle stuff. It can handle like Skyrim Special Edition. Apparently, it's very easy to port games to it. So a lot of um, third party games are going to end up on the Switch. You know, third party stuff is going to be pretty good. Um, and I didn't talk about third party support either, but I'm kind of in the middle about it. I would have put that on this list because there's a lot of people, a lot of developers supporting the Switch and there's a lot of people making games for it. But then when I look at that first year lineup, you know, I see a lot of I see very esoteric games like, you know, like Skylanders and like Just Dance stuff that's on other things. And then I see things that maybe aren't like winning me over. Like Bomberman is going to appeal to fans of the series. And I think it has microtransactions. So I don't know. Or or I think it's got a subs like a not a subscription, but I I'm not really sure how it works. It was weird. I could be wrong, so I'm not going to go into the detail. Um, look it up. I apologize if it's incorrect info. But I was not crazy about the third party that we saw for this year. They did announce plenty of stuff. There's like um, Fire Emblem Warriors, which is cool. There's some Square stuff, which looks cool if you're a fan of that. Um, there's a few other games that I, I personally wasn't into that other people would be. This is my list. Remember, this is how I feel. So I like the third party support. There's a lot of people on board. There's a lot of people who have signed up. But with the Wii U, they jumped ship pretty fast. Um, the Wii U kind of became a trash machine <laughs> in some ways. And I, I don't mean that like it was a bad system. Like it got some, you know, like, eh, here, we're going to put out this game now. We know it's not going to sell, but we told Nintendo we would do this. That's what it felt like. The Wii had just plain trash shovelware galore. And then the Wii U was just like, well, here's the thing, you know. Um, so I hope the third parties stick around. Because it's one thing to say, okay, we got the third parties. But it's another thing to say, all right, here's the support. For example, Skyrim. I'm excited about Skyrim because it's going to be portable and it's the special edition. I haven't played the special edition. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll play it. I'll probably end up uh, buying because I haven't played it in six years or five. What if it's going to be six when it comes out? Um, yeah. So, you know, cool. Fair enough. But that's still a game that's over five years old. And, you know, I think Nintendo's going to need more third party support. I just don't see it. The first year I see some stuff I see some shovely kind of things and I see some things that maybe don't interest me or a lot of other core gamers that are say they have another console or that have a PC you know if you're just getting a Nintendo system ju and just Nintendo that's one thing but if you have access to other video games it's a hard purchase to justify for, th for this first year I'm doing it because I'm gonna stream it I want to talk about it early um, yes, I like Nintendo stuff. I'm getting it to play the best version of Zelda possible. So obviously at some point I would get the thing anyway, but you know, I don't know. The first year is, is a little worrying and I hope the third party support stays and I hope that they continue to release good games. And, um, you know, that's, so that's my third party thoughts. Uh, we're going to go to the bad now. Please don't kill. Do not crucify. Launch lineup, what is it? Zelda? What is that? So I'm not sure what's going on. Um, like I said, when it comes to the launch lineup, I think it's like Just Dance, Bomberman, Trash, and like Zelda. Oh, and one, two, Switch, which costs 50 bucks and is not included. We'll talk about that in a second. So, you know, the launch lineup is important. This is the thing that you know, the Wii U didn't have a great launch lineup. And people were like, ah, there's no point. You know, I know a lot of people that didn't even know what the fuck the Wii U was. At least the Switch has some momentum. And, you know, people are excited about it. But the launch lineup fucking sucks aside from Zelda. And what if you're not a Zelda fan? There are non-Zelda fans, believe it or not, that play Nintendo systems. Um, it's, it's a little disappointing. Like, if Mario... if Okay, if Mario Odyssey and Zelda both came out, maybe that would be too much. But that would have really sold the system. If they delayed the system and timed it with Mario Odyssey, it could have been a fucking smash hit with, a, with the right launch. 
So they're taking a bit of a risk. I know Twilight Princess on the Wii sold really well, but there were other reasons the Wii sold well. The tech was really good and important and, well, it was it was gimmicky enough that it sold, but it also worked well and people wanted to, like, you know, try it. I know I did. So uh, hopefully Zelda's enough to sell this thing. We'll see. But other than that, not feeling that launch at all. <sighs> the uh, subscription service, let's start with the renting of subscription games. Did you, you hear about this? So you apparently get free games and correct me if I'm wrong. This is what I've heard. You get free games every month, but you basically just get to try them for 30 days. And I'm sure everyone has an abundance of different info and there's going to be people that say, but Vinny, I heard you get the game. Well, what I heard and what I read from Nintendo is that you only get the game for the 30 days. And then if you don't buy it, it's, you can no longer play it. What? That's unacceptable because Xbox and Sony, Sony and Microsoft both give away free games every month. You get to download them. Games with live, you get to download two or three games. So classics for the Xbox 360 or for the Xbox One. And Sony does the same thing. Um, I get that these games are going to be revamped possibly with online multiplayer, which is cool. Like, you know, maybe um, Smash 64 with online multiplayer. That's cool. What about GameCube games that didn't have online? So yeah, I, I get that it's a cool feature, but that rental thing, what, like, what the fuck? That's, I'm not okay with that. And I know Isaac is a launch title. People have said that. I'm, I'm trying to just do my thing. I don't want to like, you know, because people in chat are going to try to like, you know, say, okay, well, Isaac is a launch title, for example. Sure, I just played Isaac today, you know, and, and it's available for a lot of other things. And I said, Isaac is 40 bucks. I'm not sure how I feel about that as like a thing that you can get on Steam for cheaper. So, yeah, if you don't have anything else, Isaac is a cool launch title. Absolutely. But, you know, you guys are watching me on a computer. You can play you can play Isaac. Well, most of you are. So I don't know. It's not really helping the launch, um, in my opinion. And again, feel free to unsubscribe, dislike, whatever you gotta do. <laughs> you can do that. It's fine. Um, the renting of the games, like I said, like I'm excited for the virtual console. I hope GameCube games are in there. I hope that they do improve things and, and the multiplayer is online. The renting is stupid. Also, Nintendo's prices for virtual console games I i'm still not a fan five dollars for an nes game eight for super nintendo like 10 for n64 i said before listen i know a lot of people don't agree with this the ease at which you can get these games for free <laughs> it's it's just not five bucks for an nes game that i bought three times already so I know they're going to do some kind of discount service, I think, for people that bought, like, um, say, if you bought Donkey Kong Country on your Wii U, maybe you get a discount for the NX or Switch, whatever. Um, I don't know how that's going to work, but their pricing is really rough. And I get it. That's their IP. They can do whatever the fuck they want. And I'm okay with that. They can do that. I'm happy for them. But when it comes to N64 games or like, you know, NES games and SNES games, it's a lot of money and it adds up. So maybe there's hope that they'll find ways to like offer more discounts or bundle it. But we'll see. We'll see. Peripheral price just flatly sucks. I don't like the way they're charging I'm not sure why the Pro Controller is like 70 bucks. Let's see. Okay. So. It says here that the left or right Joy-Con controllers are 50 bucks each. Each controller has different functionality. You can buy both of them together, the Joy-Cons, for 80 bucks. 
Okay, the controller, the pro controller is 70. And it says here, the dock is $90. Just in case you want a separate dock for another room in your house. That's 90 bucks. Pro controller, 70. Now, I get that these things have tech in them. I get that the controllers are, you know, they have HD vibration, <laughs> which... I'm, I'm curious, you know, I'm very curious about that. But at the same time, that is what ma is making a lot of people very reticent to this system. And I get Nintendo has to make their money. They have to sell the tech. And I don't think they're selling anything at a loss, which is probably something they can't really, they don't want to do. They don't want to sell these items at a loss. But that's a lot of money, and it's turning a lot of people off. Whether or not you're okay with this, it's turning people off. And the reaction to the Switch presentation has been very divisive, especially since we learned about the launch lineup and the, and the prices. And don't even... Listen, the subscription service, obviously, we know a lot of people that don't like that. I'll talk about that in a second. But I'm just saying, these things alone, you know, they had some good momentum... And now people are like, kind of like, nah, you know, I'm seeing both. I'm seeing a lot of mixed reaction. And again, whether or not you're okay with 70 for a controller personally or 80 for Joy-Con, that's a steep price for a lot of people. So sucks. One, two switch is not included. One, two switch is a collection of mini games, uh, where you don't even really look at the TV. There's a cow milking game. There's um, a game where you shoot. I don't fucking know. There's uh, a game where you eat a sandwich. $50. And it's not included. So the Wii came with Wii Sports in America, which was a good move. It showed you what the Wii was capable of. 1-2 Switch is not coming with the, with the, um, with the Switch. You know, Nintendo Land came with the Wii U, but only in certain bundles. Now, some people would say that, um, well, you know, Vin, the Wii did not come with Wii Sports in Japan, and they still bought it. But that doesn't, that doesn't exactly mean that it wasn't a desired thing. Like, people just wanted to try this tech. At the time, it was so new, and it looked so cool, and the promo videos were cool, and we hadn't seen anything like it, so... By the time the Wii Sports thing came around, people were just going to buy it anyway just to try it out. It became a thing. I don't see that happening for 1-2 Switch. There was, um, maybe some people are interested. Maybe some people were really on board with it. Maybe some people in the chat right now are going to defend it, saying it looks like the best thing they've ever seen. In which case, what the hell? What are you, what are you doing? Maybe you're drinking a little too much of the milk. Okay, that milk minigame looks fucking stupid. All right, I don't know what this thing is that it costs 50 bucks, but it costs 50 bucks and it's not included. And I don't, I don't know what's going on there. So I, I don't know how to express it any further. I think that's a really stupid idea. Sorry. Bad move. Not interested. I'm probably not going to even get one to switch. I can't really even stream it, so I can't, not even as a streamer do I have use for this game. Um, sorry, Nintendo, do not kill. Please do not kill. This is just my opinion. Hey, if you want one to switch and you're going to have fun with it and you want to like milk a cow or shoot somebody with like a cowboy in, in Brokeback Mountain, you can just, you know, that's fine. But it's a lot of money. Again, turned off a lot of people, myself included. The online subscription service is uh, a talking point, you know, for a lot of people, because for a long time, Nintendo was the, the golden child. Like, oh, you know, we don't do we don't do online. And um, KY mentioned yesterday, like or two days ago, that maybe with the subscription service being paid, you'll have more opportunity for better service. Maybe, you know, there's there's other things included in there. And I just I'm, I don't know. Maybe I hope so. Um, we'll see. Maybe it's going to be the best online service ever. But the point is, people don't want to spend that money. You know, I don't think it's that big of a deal for me, but there's a lot of people that don't want to spend the money. And also, apparently, voice chat, you have to do through your phone. 
I don't know how true this is, but I, there's no onboard voice chat. Let's find out. Switch voice chat. It will require online paid service for online play and voice chat. Smart app device will connect switch, let you play online, set appointments, and chat with friends. So you have to use an app on your cell phone, which I'm sure is fine. I'm sure you guys, some of you guys are going to be okay with that. And um, that's okay. You know, but I also, I also am not so, so sure about that. It's a little weird to have a phone out. Like now I have to charge my phone while I'm playing video games and <clears throat> have it on my lap or hold it up to my head. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. So just a little weird. So there's there's a lot of things about the online subscription service that are worrying. And it's not even for me about the money. It's not like I'm trying to be cheap here. It's just I think a lot of people are going to be turned off by it. And I think it's going to be um, it's going to be a major talking point for why not to get a switch. And maybe Nintendo, you know, lost money with the servers on the Wii U. But again, you know, when it came to Mario Kart, I had never had any problems with the Switch, uh, with the Wii U. And Smash was pretty okay. Splatoon had good online service, and that was all free. So I don't know how much better we're going to get. And the monthly game download, like I said, the fact that you don't actually get the game, sure, you'll get some special offers and discounts. That's what they say. But um, you get it free for a month. Maybe they'll change before then. And then finally, the storage. It's got an abysmal storage. I think it was something like 32. Uh, the good thing about the, the storage is that you can expand it, and there's going to be SD card slot expansion, which you can add like, you know, 64 gigs uh, more or, you know, whatever. So you can increase the, the storage greatly, which is a good thing. But the fact that it's so low to start, you know, I get it. The tech prevents it from having a huge hard drive because it is portable. And any more maybe would jack up the price of the overall package from 300 to like 350 However, it's still a bit of a bummer. And you do have to buy another thing to get good storage. Luckily, you probably won't have to worry about that for the first year because the launch lineup is just a little empty. So... Let's take a look at one last thing. There's a I think here it is. It's a little blurry, but you get the idea. I think this was the uh the first year lineup. And I'm seeing stuff in there that looks good. Some stuff didn't really look that great. Um you have stuff that people may have already played on other systems or stuff that fans of the series are really going to enjoy. But it's just a little light. Um, however, that said, on the first party side of things, like I said before, you do get Zelda, followed by an upgraded Mario Kart, a, a sequel to Splatoon, and then a brand new Mario game. So you do get some good, you know, there, there are new experiences. You're going to have good first party support for a little bit. It's just, um, you know, it's it's a it's it's still a rocky first year in my opinion. I'm sure many of you would disagree, and if you find stuff on here that you like, that's great. You know, there's there's plenty of stuff on here that you might enjoy. I'm just thinking, it looks a little light to me, and Arms is cool and everything, but I don't think it's going to be the best thing ever. I think it's just going to be a fun little diversion for a while with some depth, yes, but also how long does that kind of thing last? It's no you know, it, it's not, um, I don't think it's going to be like tournamented, if you know what I mean. So, yes, I have a Switch pre-ordered. I have Zelda pre-ordered. I'm looking forward to it. When the thing comes out, we'll talk about it more. I'm excited for my Switch. But I also, maybe I'm a little less excited about the first year. And I would say that it's it's inessential. Maybe depending on how you feel about it you you could go one way or another it's it's really it's very divisive um and i know that they had a lot of hype and momentum from the first trailer when there were more possibilities and then i feel like and this is just my observation now 
I feel like they lost a little bit of that momentum with this presentation, which was overall pretty good. You know, am I disappointed overall? Yes and no. I, I This is really hard for me to form a fucking cohesive opinion because I'm kind of, I don't feel anything. As I said before, I, I'm just, yeah, it's going to happen. I'm going to get it. Great. Give it to me. I'll play it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It looks cool. I mean, the system itself, the screen looks nice. Apparently it's crisp. The visuals are great. Um, you know, apparently there's going to be some, some, um, the joy cons are going to feel good. And, you know, so I think it's going to be a cool system, but I'm not at the moment pissing my pants with anticipation and hype. And I feel like if I'm a huge Nintendo fan and I feel that way, then others who don't like Nintendo very much are going to be, they're going to be like, no, I'm, I'm not getting this. No, I'm not on board for this. And it's already happened. You know, there's been a pretty nasty backlash about this thing since the presentation. And that's not, that's not good. I mean, backlash is one word for it. I would say it's just people who already were ready to jump on the bandwagon of, of hate are definitely, they, they have their fuel. Oh, and they've got fuel, my friends. They are, they, they watched that presentation and they got an, a number of talking points and they're not entirely wrong. And I feel like, um, the, the rabid defenders of Nintendo, like I would have been 15 years ago, you also have things to defend the system with, you know, there's plenty of good stuff too. So it's like I said, I'm kind of just right in the middle. Um, there's good, there's bad and there's eh. And that was my little presentation. So you know, we'll reconvene when I have more to say, which will be when the Switch comes out. That said, just on a final note, I am really, really excited for Zelda. I can't wait for Zelda. It looks better and better each time. And Mario Odyssey also looks amazing. So I am, I am on board for those games and I hope there's going to be more. I said the other day, it would have been nice to have like one more announcement maybe an F-Zero or a Pikmin or a, um, just something else or a brand new IP that has a little bit more to it than ARMS, which is not, ARMS isn't bad, but it's just okay. I'm not even going to say the Metroid word because that's just, it's like, well, are you crazy, Vin? Apparently when asked about Mother 3, Reggie said, um, the localization for Mother 3, Reggie said, we hear your comments. That's all I can say. So he said that. And then when asked about Metroid, or actually, he, he was asked about Mother 3 again. He said, I was already asked about Mother 3 today. Maybe ask me about Metroid. And then he said something like, well, talk to me again in a year and I'll tell you about Metroid or something like that. It was a very vague comment and it didn't seem like he was answering anything. It just seemed like he was doing a PR move. Um, final note is that there might be more to come. Uh, apparently, there's been a few Nintendo announcements saying, oh, there's going to be more games revealed. You know, we're going to have a few more to reveal. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, I'll bring them. I'm ready. I want to see Nintendo succeed. I am hoping that they succeed. I love their games so much. Um, but I don't think they would have um, not brought out their big guns at this presentation. I think the biggest stuff, the stuff that's going to have the biggest selling appeal for this system has been announced already. And I think whatever else is announced is going to be kind of dribs and drabs. And it's just in a, you know, like, oh, well, here it is. Here's another game. But I don't think it's going to be like a huge title. So I'm excited, but I'm also kind of just, I can wait. <laughs> it's not like I'm, I'm excited for Zelda more than anything else. So let's put it that way. But no, for real, now this is the end of my presentation. And I will now play video games and I will shut the fuck up. Thank you for listening to my opinion and thank you for joining me. And I hope you didn't unsubscribe too hard. I hope, I hope you didn't hurt your finger clicking the down like or the um, unsub or the down sandwich or whatever. I hope your fingers are intact. I hope you're good. All right. So I'm good. You're good. More switch talk whenever that fucking happens. Maybe March 3rd. So I'm going to take one more quick break and then I will return with some trubbish, some trash. Be right back with Pokemon Moon. <laughs> 